Hello, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. So Pastor John, <clears throat> I read um, I read Genesis, mm -hmm. like you suggested, and good. Um, I found it really interesting. It was re really, really good. Good. And uh, I noticed, um, like, chapter one mm -hmm. uh, talks about the creation of the world and everything, and mm -hmm. and uh, God is creating the universe and animals and plants and yeah. Adam and Eve and yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. And I, my question for you is, how does uh, evolution and um, the evolution theory fit into all of this? Yeah. Well, that's a great question, and thank you for your question. And I'm glad you're reading the Bible, and I'm glad you're reading Genesis. Yeah, that's I'm wonderful. really enjoying it. Yeah. It's really good. A lot going on there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so let's just briefly address the the question of what what actually is evolution and and what is evolution theory really so mm -hmm. um, evolution usually um, refers to a uh, to the bi biological theory that all um, all different forms of life on earth they have developed over time from a common ancestor uh, basically through an unguided and natural process or processes at times and so that's really the short form, what we know as natural selection. And natural selection is from the evolution theory then, which was developed or um, refined by a guy called Charles Darwin and another guy, Alfred Russell. I believe okay. they were working together and that, that's where we have uh, Darwinism. So um, that's basically evolution is just the, that process and the, the theory they developed. Mm -hmm. um, so the implication of that theory is that life somehow evolved from non-living matter into all life forms. I'll repeat that. So what that theory implies is that somehow uh, life evolved from non-living matter into all life forms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever that exactly means. So there's two pillars or uh, paradigms which we want to consider here and one is uh, the single ancestry theory which is basically the idea man man derived or came from from the ape or whatever else it was yeah that's what i right? learned in school yeah, uh, yeah we um, so did i we all we saw those pictures right it's called yeah. single ancestry theory and the other paradigm uh, then involves an explanation uh, uh, explanatory me uh, explanation for the mechanism of the of this ev evolutionary process. So one is the theory, and the other one is the mechanism that explains this. So there we have uh, natural selection, mm -hmm. and uh, the and combined with random mutations. So that's that's where. Th that theory really stands. It stands on those two, yes. right? Yeah. And single ancestry theory also has um, uh, genetics aspects that are possible, um, man from ape. And so we, we should not fully dismiss the single ancestry theory part with yeah. genetics, with DNA and uh, how things are composed right. and created. So we don't want to dismiss that immediately. But the other part, the explanation part, um, uh, with the with the natural selection, plus that's very important. Natural mm -hmm. selection plus uh, the random mutations is very limited. I mean, there's just some examples they have, you know, some fossils and stuff like that. Yes, yeah. it's very limited, and I really I think that it's very questionable. And at the end of it, really, there's no evidence whatsoever. Um, how, you know, from non-created or non non-living matter, uh, you know, um, uh, bugs, you know, maybe even even sponges evolve from the same common ancestry point. Right. So that's really that's really a theory, and that may be revised. And there's it's very limited. Yeah. 
So that's pretty much it. So did that help for evolution, evolution theory pretty much? Yeah? Yeah. But now we're going to go a little bit further. Yeah. Um, what happens then is what the some people who hold to this, not all, but some scientists, they um, then move from um, the the fact that everything came about like at random or through chance or what some people call luck. Like, like the Big Bang. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I have one of my things to say about that, but yeah, uh, something yeah. like, but it, it all happened. Uh, through uh, random chance, luck, basically. Okay. And that uh, that would exclude any form of intelligent design behind, like an intelligent designer. Right. In, in other words, God or any any other intelligent being, but first and foremost, God. So um, uh, that is, of course, the um, uh, the worldview. Then so that's where we have evolution. From evolution, we've moved to evolution theory, to evolution as a worldview, where they, where the people claim that it was all by all happened by chance. Right, right. So here's the thing. So <clears throat> with this, with all of that, with the worldview, then, mm -hmm. um, what people have to explain then? It doesn't matter if they, whatever they call themselves or label themselves atheists or whatever they want to call themselves, um, they have to explain. Um, the relationship between the existence of the universe and the origin of life. I'll repeat that again. It's very important. So with that theory, they have to explain the relationship between the existence of the universe and the origin of life with, with, uh, based on their random, you know, their sense of randomness. So here we enter then the man-made worldview, or you can also call it a philosophy if you right, want. Yeah, right. and uh, where there's randomness or chance, that simply doesn't hold up. It it just doesn't, you know. They 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 anybody who claims that, they have the burden of proof um, to explain, you know, how that all fits together, mm -hmm. and it simply doesn't. Right. Some people they can. You know, come up with this or that, pretend, but really they they have the burden of proof, proof, and they, it just doesn't hold up. It just does. It falls apart at some point. Yeah. So it's not consistent, coherent. Yeah. Um, it it it's just remains that theory or yeah. worldview. Yeah. So um, I would just want to invite us to actually, um, read, uh, Genesis. Chapter one, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would that be okay? And it's from the NRT, the New Living Translation. It's a paraphrase. It's a very good translation. And I'm just going to read Genesis chapter one. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Yeah, I would actually prefer, yeah, because I, I, I think that... Do you like um, the NRT? Yeah. I do like good, it. Good, good. And I find that um, when I read Genesis, I thought, well, you know what? Mm -hmm. This sounds a lot better to me than, than um, being told that I, you know, evolved from an ape or something right. like that. So right. uh, the fact that um, yeah. I'm made in the image of God yeah. is um, yeah. is awesome to me. Yeah, it is know? awesome. Well, well, but let's uh, let us just read. This is what I would, but, yeah, I would we'll, like to. We'll, we'll briefly sure. talk about that too in the yeah. end. I, there's maybe a few more questions. Yeah. But let's just God's word speak. Um, NLT is good. The NASB is the best translation, my favorite, mm -hmm. because it's a word by word translation. It's closest to the King James Bible. But we'll talk about that some other time. Yeah. Let's just enjoy the NLT, a paraphrase, sure, which sure. is also a good legitimate translation. Yeah. Okay. And here we go. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the first day. Then God said, Let there be a space between the waters, to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And that is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. God called the space sky, 
and evening passed and morning came, marking the second day. Then God said, Let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place, so dry ground may appear. And that is what happened. God called the dry ground land and the waters seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed-bearing plant, and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. And that is what happened. The land produced vegetation, all sorts of seed-bearing plants, and trees with seed-bearing fruits. Their seeds produced plants and trees of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the third day. Then God said, Let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days, and years. Let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. And that is what happened. God made two great lights, the larger one to govern the day and the small one to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, to govern the day and night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the fourth day. Then God said, Let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. So God created sea creatures, and every living thing that scurries and swarms in the water, and every sort of bird, each producing offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply. Let the fish fill the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind, livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground, and wild animals. And that is what happened. God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock and small animals, each able to produce offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Then God said, Look, I have given you every seed-bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food, and I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky and the small animals that scurry along the ground, everything that has life. And that is what happened. Then God looked over all he had made and saw that it was very good. And evening passed and morning came, marking the sixth day. God bless you, of his word. Amazing. So that was Genesis 1. The only thing that yeah. I find with that is um, that I have a hard time wrapping mm. my head around mm. is um, the days. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. how is it possible to create all of that in just one day, mm -hmm. like is like mm -hmm. within 24 hours? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. And that's a super question. Many people have that question. And if we read this account as um, in a figurative sense, um, like how long was one day? Was it 24 hours as we know it? Was it much longer time? Or we don't know, right? So we could we could just leave it at that. And uh, But I just want to read a verse there I found uh, mm -hmm. uh, here and I marked it here for you. And um, 
and it's from Second Peter. It's from the the Petrine Epistle. So Second Peter, chapter three, verse eight, and he's talking. He's talking about the Lord's day that is coming, but this is just something to consider here. This to answer yeah. the question. Yeah, it says. I read it. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. God bless you in all this word. So we see the way his the way he counts time yes. is very different. And Definitely Peter different. right reminds of that. Yeah. Um there's the uh you know the Hebrew, the old Hebrew world who there. But I just want to point out to you what we just read. Um we we read about the creation of earth um the universe is uh, ex uh not just mentioned but how he created it the living creatures plants and people and in verse 31 he calls that very good mm -hmm. we're making them in his own image when he says us he's obviously referring to the trinity right we had a revisit we're going to re revisit that again yeah. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is there. Ah, that's what he refers to as that's us. That's what he's referring to as us. Okay. But it is our Lord Jesus Christ through whom he's creating all of this. Right. And he calls it very good. So that's just something to point out that stands out here. Right. And so what we have here is really from the theories we just read, the from theory to practice and truth and reality, we have real events, real people, and God did it. We have a cohesive, coherent worldview. Mm-hmm so to say, and that's the biblical worldview. Mm -hmm. And that is represented here. And I just thought I'd share one more thing here, also about God. Like when we are trying to engage his word and he's speaking to our hearts, um, and that is from Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, right. um, just how God uh, operates and something for us to consider, our position, our relationship to him. And it's in Isaiah chapter 55, Verses 8 to 9. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah. All right. Um, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Yeah. God bless me, was word. Bless you. So we just understand that he has revealed as much as he wanted to in his word. Yes. And he's revealed a lot. And I don't know, did you have any other questions there about this uh, evolution, Genesis, creation? No, I just, um, I just can't imagine. Mm. I can't wrap my head around mm. how many, I mean, they, they've, they've kind of guessed about yeah. how old how old they think the universe yeah, is, right. um, but uh, and they say it's like yeah. billions of years old. I don't even yeah. know how exactly how many years. Right? But, uh, yeah, pretty old is estimated. It's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. When you think about yeah. it, you know. Yeah. One one more note on that is just those are observable like scientific facts, right? And yeah. So um, one thing we want to understand too is like we don't necessarily always have to. Uh, harmonize uh, whoever comes up with whatever what they call scientific theory with scripture with the bible we don't we don't have to mm -hmm. but we do want to point out that many many mm -hmm. parts are actually there is compatibility in other words how it went you know like a big bang right like that that it, the bible doesn't tell us right that's yes. how it could have stopped in but it's not it, in and by itself completely incompatible or there's people who say the earth is much younger. Well, that would we would have to dismiss that viewpoint because we know really from science itself right. uh, that it is much older. Right. But it doesn't. It has no impact on the biblical uh, narrative or the biblical uh, revelation God has given us in Genesis. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it. That's so great. it's a keep on reading. Yeah, right? I'm going right? to. Yeah. Carry down all your questions, and I hope we'll. Be able to have you know another, another coffee together or yes. whatever. And thank uh, you so much, Pastor John. I really appreciate this. From Jesus for Jesus, may I say a short prayer for us? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. So, so, Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you for this blessed day, and we're so grateful for your word, and that you've re revealed yourself to us in your word, and how you speak into our hearts. And I pray 
for for us and 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 for all people to come into your word and to read your word your, your living word your life-giving word and to uh, to guide us and lead us into your truth and um and to bless us and fill us with hope and encouragement and joy and all the fruits of the spirit everything that comes from your word and we thank you for your genesis account where we also learn about adam and eve the creation of mankind real people real events and um no no theory there it's as real and as practical as it can get and for that we're just so grateful we thank you lord jesus we love you and we praise you in your holy name we pray amen amen